No guess, no fucking problem. I would say take it, Bobby. But why would you have to take it when I could just say it's me and Bobby? But here's Bobby. That's right. It's the boy. Oh, do you want to be? Nope. No, it was short enough. Oh, it be- I was going to do. Chuk, 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 and I did a whole thing. I was all ready. Next time, my guy. We'll nah, see it fuck Thursday. It. Fuck it. Be ready when Thursday. Oh, I get no, a pat. I, no it was my one time. <laughs> How are you, sir? I'm doing all right, buddy. I had a good weekend. How about you? I had a good week. I didn't do shit, but that was nice. Oh, I had kind of the opposite where I did a lot, but it was all good things. So that was good. I uh, Friday night, I had a show with Gino back in the city. So I went, unloaded a truck, found out the guy I like working with wasn't there. But without him, we just hammered through the truck. Like everybody was just kind of like, all right, I know I'm in charge of this section. I just got to get it done and then I can go home. And we all hammered through this truck. As we're literally putting the last finishing touches on, the manager calls us all back to the office. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Like, did we forget something major? Like, I know I was outside talking to the truck driver. Was I supposed to get him to sign something? And she's like, hey, guys, bad news. With the snowstorm coming Sunday night, they're moving the truck to either Sunday or Monday or Sunday or Saturday. And I'm like, it's definitely going to be Saturday because I'm driving to New York tonight. But just text me. So I go. Pick up Gino. Kevin Dombrowski joins us. And I'll be honest with you, Pat. There isn't anyone in the world who can kill for 12 people like me and Gino Visconti. <laughs> Kevin can either? Kevin's Kevin's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was definitely a good ars- ace in the hole, but like ace in our arsenal even. But like me and Gino are like Jordan and Pippen in front of 12 people. Now you bump that number to 20. We got some competition. You lower that number to like seven, we're in trouble. But twelve is our sweet spot. Nice. It's a good. It's a good spot because you could you can make twelve sound like twenty three. Exactly. You, know exactly. I mean? you could almost make it double. Almost, but there's that one that's not going to give you the fucking double. They're just not. No, no. And then the the host was great. He went up and his whole set was about how he used to smoke crack. So Larry was on the show. Nope. Oh, it was a white guy. And then he <laughs> talked about how crackheads were smarter than all other drug addicts. He's like, we'll oh. make a pipe out of anything. You ain't never seen somebody do heroin and inject it through a TV antenna. If you and ever he... took a TV antenna and strapped it to your veins, you might be a crackhead. Did you do that yeah. stuff? No, that would have been funny. <laughs> he did not. He did not get a laugh. And the whole time, this dude's big dog in me. And you know what I'm talking about, where yeah. he's like, so. So where are you from? Why are you here? And I'm like, I work with Gino a lot. I'm from Hershey. He's like, oh, Hershey, huh? You know, stitches. You ever work stitches? And I'm like, I, I haven't worked stitches. And I'm about to say because it closed five years before. I started yeah, I worked. Sti- no, Bobby, longer than that. I worked stitches when it was last years. And that was like 10 years ago. Yeah, exactly. And so he, before I could say that, he's I'm like, no. And he's like, oh, well, if you don't work stitches, you don't matter. I was like, all right. <laughs> Dude, so, I got into stitches because I was booking a comedy club and the guy who wanted to work the comedy club was like, hey, I can get you to do this club. If I get you to open for me, can I do your comedy club? And I'm like, well, no. But he's like, still, I'm allowed to bring anyone. And I had been doing comedy like two or three years and I still got to do 30 minutes. And I didn't even have it. That's how good stitches is. <laughs> well, 30 minutes is an interesting time, especially when there's 12 people in the room and you thought you were doing like a 10 minute spot. Yeah. But- So I'm going up against nothing, and I I decided to open with my new joke, which is basically, hey, Gino, how old are you? And he was like, I I just turned 53. And I'm like, all right, everybody, wish Gino a happy birthday. And they did, and then I was like, which brings me to my next point. You should get to be at least 53 before you kill yourself. He was like, sure. I drove 10 hours round trip to perform in front of 12 people, nine of which would have just been drinking in this room regardless of what was happening. And I may look in the mirror and be like, ah, I should blow my brains out. But I'm young. Things could change. Now, if I was the headliner <laughs> and that that won him over and then for 30 minutes, we had fun. I did my therapy joke. You love. Yes. And at the part where I mentioned somebody sucking a dick for drugs, a guy yelled out the host used to suck dick for crack. And I was like, he did. And then he took those skills and came up on stage and sucked dick for you guys, too. The whole room lost it and he got pissed. But it was, well, you it was got mad because you, were, you did well. Fuck him. Um. Oh, you're right. Did you just get hit by a crackhead? 
No, I got a text from somebody we were talking about earlier, and I just don't want to deal with it. But anyway, and don't we are focused on the show. I if, know, that, I if, if someone was texting during your 12 person show, you would have thrown them out. Take the phone away. You know what I mean? It's away. Yeah, yeah. I said not you. Away. I mean them. Not you. You do what you got to do. No one can see you anyway because you're not moving on the screen. So that's fine. Yeah, Bobby's everyone's like, why is Bobby doing a ventriloquist act? That's what he does now. He does a ventriloquist yeah, that's thing. He's a new thing there. I I've um, got a penis puppet. I did a Can joke. I? I headline now. Anyway. Oh, okay. I like that. Penis puppet is good. But <laughs> he, I did he has a penis puppet. Gen I used I. to do an opening a joke like you did about the crowd being small. And I did it like twice. And one time I got laughs and one time I got really booed. And I don't usually get booed. But um, I said, uh, I was like 14 people. I'm like 14 people. I mean, that's a small crowd. But that's a, you know what? That's a pretty good day in a school shooting. And then... <laughs> <laughs> I go, you're not yeah. as sad. I go, you're not as sad. You're 14. You're like, yeah, whatever. That happens. But 14 for a comedy show, that's unfortunate. And then one time they laughed, the other time, and boom, I'm like, all right, easy. I hope your kids get shot. But um, I hope your kids can take a bullet better than they can take a joke. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm taking the bullet spot. You're t- your kids are taking the bullet, period. It's fine. Hey, do you do that? I mean, did we talk about this? Uh, Chrissy's album recording were you at that i was yeah how was that i I saw pictures how was it it was great everybody on the show killed chrissy mayer for everyone that doesn't know i'm talking about chrissy mayer recorded an album on january 6th that's a big day for her she had some kind of like anniversary of some fun thing that happened to her january 6th anyway go ahead you know who recorded that what company recorded it isn't it the company that you and aaron burr have Yeah, it'll be uncancelable records. Just wanted to throw that out there. I know. So it was a lot of fun. Uh, I drove Gino and all the equipment to record with. He, Gino hosted, and Gino, I mean, just set the room in a way. Everybody was kind of nervous when she said Gino was hosting. Like a lot of people were like, oh, it's going to be tough to follow that level of energy. And is he going to stay sober? Like those were the two big things. And he did a perfect job of pacing his set. And like getting everybody just in, but not like really, you know what I mean? Doing anything like super high paced or crazy and just kind of set the floor. Great. Anthony Cumia came out. He killed. He did a new bit. I love where he just looks at his phone yeah, and is like, I'm not a comedian. And then does crowd work. He's like, if I was a comedian, I'd say something like, and then he does crowd work that way. Cause he, some people were giving him a hard time for checking his notes during sets. So he did that. And everybody was kind of like, Oh, and then he just roasted at everybody. It was awesome. And then do you know Andrew Harms? No, I do not. But isn't he part on her show? Yeah, that's become her announcer. And he went up and just killed. I didn't know he was a comic. He I saw him do the secret show once. He was there and we threw him up um, because it was the one I was running. And I'll throw up as many comedians as I can. You know what I mean? And not really care about if you're good, but if you're deserve time, I'll give it to you. You know what I mean? And he murdered in front of compound fans. And then he did it then again. And then Chrissy came out, and her whole set was just phenomenal. Um, very. Smooth. She was like, she was ready for it. She was ready, and like, did a very good job of talking about the anniversary, and then doing other material too. Like, it very much felt like an anniversary of that day special, but at the same time, you could pull jokes there that'll be timeless. Uh, yes, yeah, so you could listen to it, and you don't have to be you don't have to be aware or be on that side of the political view to enjoy the, the album. No, and then cool. Gino did me a huge solid and let me do a check spot at the end, which was a lot of fun. Nice. Now, so. who I feel, okay, who's the piece of shit in this story? Ready? Mm-hmm. Is it Chrissy Mayer for taking a guy named Andrew Harms? Okay, we all said did well, but put him in the worst spot humanly fucking possible. You're going to follow Gino Visconti, who is a fucking under, he has like cult following. Kumia. Who's one of the greatest more uh, radio personalities of all time, most famous morning show people of all times, and then having to go on before a person who's doing one of the most important things of their life and say, hey, don't drop the ball. Sometimes you're my announcer. People might not know you're a good comic. They only know you as the announcer on my show about sex and stuff. Or is it anybody else? Who's the piece? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Honestly, and a lot of people didn't even know her from that show. Like most of her viewers that were in there knew her from there's a, a video game podcast she does on Fridays and that's where like 50% was from and then the other was just like her podcast 
She has 314 podcasts. Yeah, and they're all pretty solid, which is pretty impressive. Yeah, she has her own Chrissy Mayer one. There's that, what, Simpcast? The Simpcast, which is like a live stream. And then this one, I think, is called Friday Night Tights or something, but it's, it's oh, okay. a video game. But, like, he, he went up, and it, his style is different. He's quirky. You know what I mean? He's the weird guy. He says, oh, I'm sure he's great. I'm just saying that sounds no, 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 like a scary thing. spot. It does. That said, like, I don't know about you. That's the kind of spot that gets my dick a little hard. I'm like, okay, I'm in a position where I'm supposed to fail here. I, I, I like those kind of things. Like, I, 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 there's something fun about really putting yourself to the limit. You know what I mean? Like, oh, no, no, no. I, I believe in that. I just don't want to be opening for somebody on their album. I've done that. And it's just like, you think too much. Mostly comedy is a selfish thing. In that moment, it can't be. And I, I've opened for two different people on their albums and that you got to be funny. Like I, It's awesome to hear what Gino did. People were worried about me when I did that for like John Moses and his first yeah. album. And it was the same thing where it's like, Pat's going to beat up the room. He's going to do this. And be great. But I was smart about it. I was still me and funny, set the right pace, got the room going, but didn't try to do too much craziness. So John could have the room to be a hundred percent his. It's his moment. That's what I'm saying. It's a hard thing. And if I was Andrew, I'd want to impress Kumi. I'd want to impress Gino. I want to do all this stuff. But you also don't want to bury Chrissy after she just filed two. Other, you know what I mean? That's a, it's, a, it's different than a regular comedy show. You put me in front of or have me follow suit killers on a regular showcase. And I can't wait. I can't wait to go up and do that. But when it's someone else's special day, that's what I'm like. Ooh, I don't really like that. I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's the beauty of Gino honestly, is that he would have been able to get the room to the point where it needed to be for her to come out. And it wasn't a governor's audience that was attending a comedy taping. It was a Chrissy Mayer audience. Right. Which was really cool to see. Like, it was impressive how much she packed that room. And to be honest with you, like, I know her fans don't follow these guidelines as much, but just the difficulty created as COVID was spiking – like about travel and all this shit. The fact that she still packed that room was pretty cool. And then she killed. I mean, I am really excited for people to hear this album. It's going to nice. be great. Now, is it because the audio was done by you? No. Uh, is that why it's going to sound good? Serious. Because you're such Hang a great on. technician? No, because I am not the great technician. A huge thank you needs to be given to Roy Harder, who donated his time, came, helped me get it set up, and then helped me edit it down and make sure it all sounded great and everything so thank you roy oh you mean roy harder from the world's longest title of a show the east side dave show with roy harder every tuesday at 7 30 on compound media long title yeah all the all the east side dave stars were there big a i saw all his pictures i'm sure boobs what was his name Bo, Bobes. Bobo Bobo was not there no he was not i know he's not boobs i fucked up i bet has been taking care of his family during the pandemic a lot was barry ribs there no it was a Thursday, so he was probably working. I just wonder if he was just going to be there waiting to get a spot. <laughs> no, he's he's better about that now. I'm joking. It's all in good fun. No one's going to see this anyway. Um, speaking of people like that, I think next week I'm going to be on a Ski Mask podcast. Oh, man. Is that, did you get like commit a crime and have to do community service? I was. This is why I'm bringing it up. I was going to ask you if you think it's a smart decision. I like those guys, but every time I go on, I feel like I'm going to be fucking attacked. Yeah. Now, they've always been respectful of me. Always. But I still, it's the only show I get nervous for. Because yeah, he's no, like... Why not do it? Have fun. Because, you know, it, it's, it's like uh, fucking Gonzo Radio. Yeah, you never know what's going to happen there. But, you know, he's, he hit me up the other day. He said, Happy New Year. And he's like, bud, would you do anything you can come back on? And I'm like, I might have some time next week, so maybe I do it. And, you know, I think I I was at the beginning of us doing this. I was going on a lot of our shows trying to get us more exposure. I go on other shows. And I've just been busy with work and I haven't got a chance to. Not that their audience is going to jump over here, but they are pillageable. Remind people we're still out there. Yeah, that's what it is. So, but I was, I wanted your blessing before I went. Yeah. Have fun. Why not? They're good guys. Well, I don't know if I'm going to have fun. See, the last time I was supposed to do it, Stancil and Mead weren't going to be on. And I'm like, okay, well then I don't know. Yeah, I get, I get it. Oh, they'll be there this time. 
I hope. But uh, so you got not a lot. You got you shows this weekend. You're a lot of work, all that stuff. I same kind of thing. The snow is fucking things up. I'm off from work next week. I had I have one week coming to me, and I guess the the work year ends at the end of January, not the end of December. So I didn't realize I had a week of vacation coming. So my boss is like, you have to take it or you lose it. And I'm like, well, I don't really take vacation. because no, you're going to fucking take it. So I'm taking it the last full week of this month, kind of being forced to. The second to last day I have to work before I go on vacation, we're getting the largest truck I've ever fucking gotten in that store. And before that, two days earlier, getting like the third largest truck. It's going to be like 8,000 pieces coming in two days that I have to deal with before I go on vacation. Talk about a sprint to the finish. And makes me feel like I said to my boss, because you're getting that much shit, watch you guys go a whole week. I'm off without getting a fucking truck. Oh, definitely. That's yeah. how it's going to go. That's why he's making you take that week. He knows. He had no clue because he's even like, fuck. He was like laughing at that. But it's like, it's it's, it's insane. But whatever. So I I got, but I did get, that's just about the weekend. Going back to that. I worked Friday and Saturday. My son had wrestling on Saturday. He um, hyperextended his elbow like a couple weeks ago. And he's like, you know, Mr. Tough Guys so is just like, oh, I just wrestle with it. And like, yeah. yeah. And so if he, well, he'll like, he doesn't blame anything, but he's like, this one, like he had one loss in the tournament. He, he won like three times, lost once, whatever. And he's just like, yeah, it, my arm was a little weak on that. So I'm like, you hyperextended your elbow. He's like, yeah, yeah but I should have known the counter here. I'm like, shut up. He's Christ. He's going to kill a man. Isn't it? But like, so he wrestled Saturday. So I get to see him. But my daughter came on Friday. But then I got from work because of this crazy work week. My way my schedule worked. I got a Sunday and Monday off in a row, which I never get. So I was able to have them come over. And then uh, the three of I mean, my son as well. So I have my, both my kids together hanging out. We haven't done in a while, but both together because they're wrestling and stuff for like four days. So it was nice. That sounds beautiful. It was very nice. And we watched some crazy show on Netflix with like a priest and like vampires and shit. They think they're angels. It's really good. That does sound kind of interesting. Called Mass Midnight Mass. Oh boy. It was good. I'll check it out. Yeah, but I just spoiled like half of it so much. Nah, I wasn't really following that closely. Good. I'm happy with- I will say so on Saturday I came back to Dick's on about two hours of sleep because I had to drive home from Queens. And I uh, got there. We unloaded the truck literally before the store was open. We've never done anything this fast. And I was getting ready to leave, and they were like, Bobby, there's a racket that needs strung. There's three of them. Do you mind doing one today? And you know what I said, Pat? What would you no, say? Not at all, which is a change, because normally you hear me bitch about that. Right? Oh, no, not at all. Yeah, like, no, I don't. They're saying no. No, no, no. I was like, I won't. That doesn't bother me in the slightest. I'll go do that for you. Uh, I told you last week it was Employee Appreciation Day, so I was waiting for my food to arrive anyway. You know, I'm, I'll go string this racket. And then I get the paperwork. And this is where it all hits the fan, buddy. Because on the paperwork, it says, customer had racket strung in October. And now the strings are way too loose. And it was returned New Year's Eve. Please restring tighter. And tighter is in all caps and underlined. Ooh. And then where it says, like, string at regular tension, it's circled and exclamation point please with like three exclamation points at which point i hit the ceiling in anger you know just see red yeah because i i i don't screw up rackets like they're not a hard tennis rackets they're they're just literally a straight across straight down the range that they were like string at the recommended tension is a 10 degree range so there is some play in there you know what i mean like i guess i could make it a little tighter I go to my manager and I'm like, hey, Laura, I'm going to staple this to the time clock and say, figure out how to string your own fucking racket, you stupid C word. It was clearly a woman (laughs) who wrote it. Laura pulls me aside and is like, dude, it's probably one of our 16 year old cashiers who was getting screamed at by a customer. And I'm like, all right, fair point. That said, let's teach those kids that when a customer does that, go, hey, then take it to a racket shop. That's as good as our guy can do. We can't really adjust it. Let's, you know what I mean? We'll get refund it for you. Absolutely. But take it to a shop. And it's also been right. months. It's been three months. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got to loosen. It was, still, it was still fine to play with. It was still, I checked. Right, but if you're getting a lot of, wind, first of all, those are playing a lot of indoor because it's fucking October and, and now it's January. But like, if they're playing, if they're giving a lot of play, they're going to have to tighten again anyway. Yeah, you're going to have to get it strong depending on how often you play. But right. again, this was still fully playable. So if you're really that persnickety about it, 
you should take it to a le- higher level shop. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to be a jerk. So I go, Pat, and I string this thing. I've never, st- I didn't know our racket tensioner could go that high in tension. I had to call the strong guy, the guy who does steroids in the bag, and be like, Josh, I need you to crank this a little further for me. And I strung this racket together, and I just got done, and the manager was like, hey, Bobby, uh, how'd that racket go? And I was like, well, I can promise you she won't complain about it being too loose. Oh, the ball's going to fly through a wall, dude. Oh, dude, it's going to not even go anywhere. It's just going to shatter as soon as she hits the ball with it. (laughs) And then if she says anything, you just go, persnickety, because I'm just happy you said that word. I'm happy you used that in a regular fucking sentence. That was amazing. It took a lot of effort to not follow it up with a cunt. Because yeah. usually I call people persnickety cunts. Right. Persnickety cunt is the same thing as like feverishly masturbating. Like it doesn't yeah. really work with anything else. Exactly. He was right. feverishly curling. Feverishly persnickety. Like I can't even do it. Um, you want to do some POS shit? Why not, man? All right. Let me get, let me pull up. I, 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 because this week we don't have the, the bells and or whistles, which everybody was enjoying. You're doing a great job with that, by the way, Bobby. I like the last one a lot. I think, I think I've great. got a, uh, a permanent place lined up now in New York. And once that happens, that'll be. We'll great. get there. But the fact that we're hinting at it, all the baby birds are going to go feed us. Like, we're going to feed you, baby. Don't worry about it. But here we go. Judge finds cancer patient who's 72 for his overgrown lawn. The judge said, I'd give jail time if I could. A hardline judge has fined and ridiculed a 70-year-old Michigan man with lymphoma, ruling that he should be ashamed of being too weak to mow his own overgrown lawn. Burhan Chowdhury of Hamatrack, a community about six miles north of Detroit, admittedly fell behind in yard maintenance after he was diagnosed with cancer in the lymph nodes in 2019. His overgrown property prompted local officials to subpoena Chowdhury. In the now viral footage of the Zoom court hearing, Chaudhary's breathing appeared labored as Judge Alexis G. Crott of the 31st District berated him. You should be ashamed of yourself, said Crott in the video. That got over my, oh, Jesus Christ. It's near post just fucking tried to like redo the thing. Um, hold on, my bad. Um, you should be ashamed of yourself. Uh, the video got over 37,500 views in like six hours. If you give your jail time on this, I would give you jail time. You've got to get that cleaned up. That is totally inappropriate. And she ordered him to pay a $100 fine. His son, who was 33, and also present, spoke on his behalf, saying that after his cancer treatments, he'd been very weak, and he hadn't been able to do it. And his son had been doing the work for him for a while, but had to go off to where, they li- where they're from, Bangladesh, for three months to help out with families and things, and could not have come back to help mow the lawn. And then rhetorically, the judge shoots back, do you see that photo? The photo we're looking at right now? That is shameful shameful the neighbors should not have to look at that which by the way i've seen way worse yeah it looks pretty shitty to the left there it is but i've seen i don't think it's a federal crime to be having that um at, at instagram people have lost their minds saying that um that she has a history of being bigoted to immigrants and she attacks immigrants all the time with things because this guy obviously by his name is indian as fuck i think they call it indian af the petition is also pointed out to a post on instagram detroit blogger yeah, Karen, her judge's name should be Karen. I don't know. It's a bunch of dumb shit at the end of this article. Um, Krat has not returned requests for a comment about the petition as a role. The judge forbids her for making statements about the case. And um, they go on and on about this, but uh, you cannot give a 17-year-old person jail time for not cleaning an alley. I was really shocked by it. I didn't expect her to yell at us. This kind of a situation it was on and on. You got to find 100 bucks. Who is the piece of shit in this story? Is it the judge? For laying down the fucking law, for finding this guy hundred dollars, which by the way doesn't sound terrible, hundred dollar fine. We get worse for other dumb things too. You get it for bad parking fines, things like that. For obviously, there's a code. Obviously, there's something there. If the neighbors are upset about it, the fact that it's even on her docket means that something has happened where our neighbors are upset, and then to a point where police are being called and actions had to be taken. She, which, I'm guessing the judge didn't just drive by and decide to see it. Is it the guy? Yeah, I know he has cancer and he's doing all this stuff. But at the same time, if he can get in his car and drive to his cancer patient meetings, he can sit on a lawnmower and mow his fucking lawn, right? I don't know. You're going to pay someone. I know the son can't do it. Man, cancer is expensive, but you can probably pay someone else. You're Indian people. Don't they all help each other? Find another Patel. Have them do it. Is it the son? Yeah, he went to Bangladesh for a little bit. I get it. It's what you do sometimes when you're Bangladeshian. But do you get someone else, another person, hire them to take over? It was your responsibility to help out. 
Or is it all the Instagram people who want to make this racist? Yeah, if it was an Indian judge and an Indian person, they wouldn't bring that up. Yeah, it's a white lady judge, but that's even that's where they should be. All women are judgmental. Women should be judges. That's what white women do. Who's the piece of shit in the story? Bobby, you go first and last, I guess. I uh, I do miss the 1800s in the wild, wild west where something like this would happen and you could just go in the courthouse and challenge that stupid cunt to a duel and be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> like, clearly the judge is at fault. What happened to justice being blind? We don't need your fucking personal opinion on your yard. And you know what? If I was the Indian dude, I'd ask to see your cunt. Be like, let's see how you trim that, huh? Well, what if it's shaved, dude? If it is, then I'll be like, you know what? You can reprimand me, madam. I apologize. Clearly, you do keep things in order. But I bet that bush is more whack than the jungles of Vietnam, Pat. Old, sweaty, under that robe, mangled and twisted. Couple she, dead probably, babies in there. I bet, like, every so often when she wipes, like, she catches some that's knotted together and, like, winces in pain. It's so bad. But for me, like, a racist judge is a racist judge. That's kind of part of being a judge, I feel like. That's, I think, the third question on the bar exam, if I'm not mistaken. The piece of shit's the rest of the community. Yeah. I can tell you for a fact, if this was one of my neighbors, it wouldn't be a problem involving the police. It would be a knock on the door being like, hey, do you need some help? And then you know what would happen? There would be some help. Or if the guy was like, oh, I'm sorry, I've been dealing with some cancer, but I'm too proud to ask for help. You know what would happen? He'd come out one day and it would just be done. And nobody would have asked any questions. You know what I mean? Like, I, I was talking to my parents about this because they had to deal with snow while I was in New York. And my dad's old. You know what I mean? He can shovel it and he tries, but my mom gets worried when he does because he's yeah. getting up there. And, like, and he can slip and fall, like, of course. I'll be home tomorrow. And if it's really an issue... Just ask Steve next door. Like, he owes us a dozen. Because back in the day, Steve used to work overnights. And his daughter had to get out for school. So I'd get up and plow their whole driveway. You know what I mean? I knew it wasn't like a paid thing. It's just being a community. And that's what's missing in America now. It's all about me, me, me. Ooh, I'll fine you if you don't cut your grass. Instead of just taking the 30 seconds. If you own the other house next to him, you're cutting your yard anyway. Take the 10 seconds and trim it for him. And You know what I mean? Right. I don't know. I think it's more about the community than it is about the judge making a stupid mistake. And maybe the fact that that dumbass judge is elected in that community explains itself. I, I get all that. You, I, I, I agree with you. If that's, I like the idea of community helping each other, but I also know that not everything goes the way you said. There's proud and there's also asshole. There could have been a, a conversation I'm because to me, it's like the neighbors are the piece of shit if they just called for the sake of calling. But it has it become a thing where other people are like, hey, man, we will help you. And he's like, you fucking touch my lawn. I'll fucking shoot you. We don't know the conversation. And there's those kind of people in the world, too, where it's like, don't don't tell me what to fucking do. I'll fucking grow this all I want. We know, And then you're like, I know he has cancer, but he's still an asshole. Sometimes assholes get cancer, not just good people. People just think they're good when they have cancer. No one likes them before. You know, so I don't know if I can go with the neighbors because I don't know what led to the phone calls. What I do think it is, is the police that were involved that got it to the point where a judge had to see it. I think the police should have come over and said something for, hey, you need to take care of this or we're going to come back and possibly find you and possibly arrest you. Because I don't think that was done. Because if that was done, all of a sudden, you, that's, a, that's a way you can cure cancer when the police are getting ready to find you. I don't think that should have been there. It's not the son, whatever. He's in Bangladesh. Cancer guy, he can't do it. The judge is doing her judge job. It's got put in front of her. She's got to be tough. I've been in front of judges. I've been around judges. They all have fucking... They, have, they can't just look at somebody and say, because you have cancer, you can get away with something. Because then everyone's going to go, well, I have cancer, so I can rape. You know what I mean? I mean, even the same thing. Yeah, there's a great scene in the movie. Oh, what's it called? Law-abiding citizen. Where the guy gets sentenced to court. In court, and he, he yells at the judge after his sentencing. I bet you let your husband fuck you in the ass. And like, because that's a crime. I think that's pretty fun. I, that is fun, but I hope that didn't happen in the case because Indian people don't like butt sex, I don't think. It smells enough as it is. Hmm. All, I don't think all Indian butts smell bad. Not the ones that live here, right? Don't, don't they have to change it up? I think all butts in general probably smell bad. I think the, the natural state of all butts is stinky. And, like, there are people who put the work in to get it, like, not. But 
the natural state of all bugs is naturally stinky. And, like, it's a limited time thing. You could douche yourself, right? But you're going to, in, like, an hour or two, it's going to stink again. I hope there's a book somewhere called The Natural State of All Butts. Because that was a beautiful phrase that you just put together. <laughs> <laughs> natural state of all. Next on the Oprah Winfrey book chat, The Natural State of All Butts. Um, I know you had a thing you were going to do one time. We're, we're going to save that for people, right? Yeah, that's, that's going to be a people thing. I did uh, want to talk about this. I have a friend... Uh, we went to school together for like six months in seventh grade before I moved from Memphis to Hershey. And then she became a lesbian and like got married. And last week, her wife's mother died. Her grandmother, I'm sorry, her wife's grandmother passed away. So they went to the funeral and all of her stories this week. And the day of the funeral, we're like them partying, 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 partying in a limo, like partying, dancing, grandma on a casket, partying, 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 partying. (laughs) It's like, who's the piece of shit? Is it me for being super judgmental and being like, maybe that's not how you best remember or remember grandma? Or is it them for kind of like, you know what I mean? Not remembering grandma, right? Pat, what are your thoughts? I think everybody mourns in their own way. You know what I mean? So it's like some people might think you're not supposed to do that. To memorize, remember grandma, maybe grandma said, Hey, I want you guys to live life to the fullest. When I leave, I want you guys to party like it's 1999 or I'm not dead and I'm 99. Yeah. They wanted to do that. Maybe grandma was a cunt and always told them you never have fun. Always fucking say buttoned up, be a good lady. I hate that you're lesbians. Grandmas hate lesbians. You know what I mean? They're not, they're not into that. So maybe they're like, fuck you, grandma, and drink it. Once again, don't know the situation of the matter, but I don't know. Grandma's dead. I don't think we, I ever understood why we should act a certain way when someone's dead. That's the one time they can't stop it. If you're going to act nice for somebody, do it when they're alive. They're dead. You can do whatever the fuck you can pee on their grave. It's wrong, but no one can, that dead person can't stop you. Okay. Would it change your opinion if I told you the last picture was just a picture of her in a brassiere and it said onlyfans.com slash BMAC use promo code bye bye gam gam to save 25%? No, I think if anything now, I'm actually happier that she's utilized. Her grandma's probably like, listen, live life to the fullest and capitalize on every opportunity. And she's like, you're an opportunity, Grand Gam Gam, and I'm going to do this. Now, if a guy gets turned on by underwear that says Gam Gam on it, well, that's his problem. I like it. I like entrepreneurship. Help me fill this void in my life. Yeah. Help me fill this void. And then she has her legs open and points to her pussy. Yeah. That's the void she wants filled. Yep. You got it. You got what I, I was going with. That. I did it. I, I did the joke too, Gam Gams. Why? Who do you think the piece of shit is? Probably the grandma for dying. Yeah. You know what? They should live all the time. Yeah. Stupid grandmas. <laughs> I hate when someone's 48 and says they're a grandma. I know you're, you're Puerto Rican, obviously, and you do have grandkids, but you should have a different title to you're old. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. The, it is confusing. And like, I even get mad when like a porn star you followed for a couple of years goes from like being young teen to milf. Like I mean, even that class of kid, I'm like, she's 27. Yeah. Or when someone just says they're a milf in one porn and the next one, they say they're a teen. It's like, no, once you go milf, you can't go back to teen. Yeah, exactly. I know you have to look for it, but realize I know your body of work. It is fun to go back and be like, oh, I get why you act this way in older life because I see how you were treated as a child. I hate when a lady who's like 50 something years old says, can you believe I'm a grandma? Look how sexy I am. I'm like, yeah, I can believe you're a grandma because you're hot. So therefore you fucked early and you probably made a kid that was also like, I'll be like mom and fuck early. And that's why you're a grandma at 50 because you guys look fuckable. Exactly. We had this porn star on in hot water today. And they asked her how old she was. And she was like, oh, but age is but a number. And I was like, yeah, a number you've seen a fuck ton of. Like, Jesus <laughs> Christ. That bitch looked older than death. Who was the lady? I don't remember her name. It wasn't that memorable. 
I do remember she was like, can somebody get me a water? And we didn't have any cups. So I went and got her a Fiji water that she took one fucking sip out of Pat. You know how expensive Fiji yeah. fucking water is? Yeah. That's bullshit. Because if I was a dick, she would have swallowed all of it. Exactly. Was she a guilt? I don't know. We said she was old, so. Well, uh, the. The ilf is what I would. No, no, no. I just meant was she grandma didn't. age. I, I'm sorry. I, I was going with porn terms. They all say guilt. They're not. I see things that say milf, but it also says chubby next. Chubby milf. Like, no, no. You can't be both. <laughs> well, I guess. I guess ilf is in the eye of the beholder, right? Yeah. Yeah. That, that is true. That the is term true. actually does mean not. It's not. M- Melf, Melf would be mom. Everyone loves to fuck. It's and then it would be Melf. describing your mom, right? Everyone loves to fuck my mom. That was a I show. <laughs> that was a show on um, I think ABC for a while with Doogie Howser. He was in. It. Careful, Frank's gonna pitch that to HBO Max and cut you out of it. Oh yeah! If everyone's wondering where's Frank now, I said I messaged Frank and I said, "Hey, we're doing a seven thirty one. That's before your bedtime. Can you record?" And he goes, can't do Mondays anymore. And I'm like, why? You don't do anything anymore. And he goes, well, the problem is, last time I did a Monday, then his heart went through the roof with all the stress and all this shit, whatever it was. And I think in a way he was blaming getting excited on our podcast for causing his heart to have issues. Which, by the way, if you watch that back, he wasn't really that excited. I mean, I get way more excited. I'm on blood pressure medication, but like, he's not excited. But I guess what's going to be happening is Tuesday mornings from now from now on, he'll be going to a doctor to get his like his, his heart checked. So the last thing he wants to do is get all fired up right before he has to go. That makes sense. You know what else could have caused Frank's heart attack? Being 80? The guilt out of writing his co-host out of his <laughs> show. The idea he fucking had. Did, okay, I gotta watch that back all the way. Did he say he took your idea, or did he say he took the idea of you pitching a show? He said the second. Then we said, "What was the show?" And he refused to tell us, right? Because it's really the first one. Well, because I don't think he wants to put it out there, so I can steal his. He's about to talk to the HBO Max. Thing, the only thing I can hope for Frank is that by the time Rev Carded hits air, he's already dead. So I get robbed of the ability to watch the life pass out of his eyes. Pat. I'm That's hoping I've had. I'm hoping the cartoon is like, you know, when Bill Cosby had little Bill, I want little Frank. It's just a kid constantly trying to get fucked and being shot down by pedophiles and doing cocaine and also not calling them pedophiles because they didn't exist yet. That's fair. That would be a good show. I honestly kind of hope it's the life and story of Hebel Knievel. And he's like, you guys forgot about that one. I hope it's a story of a young him before he met Alan Abel. And he was a, he used he was a ventriloquist and his puppet was, was a bean and it's called Frank and bean. And they go around doing awful. He's doing what he does on the podcast, just yelling at his hand. That would be hilarious. I want Frank and bean. Be or I hope it's uh, one. I hope it's a cartoon about Alan Abel using and abusing, like Pinky in the Brain, where Alan Abel's the brain, and Frank is Pinky, and he's just making him do all this dumb shit. That would be very funny. I would be on board for that. Yeah, hope, hopefully it's that. All right, you ready for another fun story? Hell yeah, man! I feel like we're doing great at this. I think we're great at everything we do. How about that? You like that positivity that's just rolling in there? You didn't sell it with your eyes. Oh, uh, well, you can't see me. Eh? I can't see you. You can't see me. What are you, John Cena? <laughs> Hold on. There you go. All right. Let's pull. You can see my lovely picture here. Yes. Okay. Woman who binged 32 sushi rolls and all you can eat buffet rushed to the hospital. Oh, God. The first line. Fuck. Guess what the first line is. Uh, something's fishy you know what that'd be better than this california woman was on a roll fucking boo all right so the first piece of shit samantha abraham who we've talked about before put her out of the way she's the piece of shit all right danielle shapiro this woman right here 
24. Wanted to get her money's worth at a $50 all-you-can-eat sushi buffet at Sushi 85 Restaurant in Mountain View, California last month. But after indulging a little too much, including 32 rolls of sushi, her uncooked delights left her feeling a bit raw inside. Following the binge, Shapiro was rushed to the emergency room with severe stomach pains. That's where she was diagnosed with gastrophil... Uh, yep. Reflux disease, commonly known as acid reflux. Shapiro shared the experience in a TikTok on December 23rd in which she shows off the mountains of food she consumed in one sitting and the subsequent trip to the hospital that left her with IVs in her arm. Now, before I go to the rest of the story, I made this joke on stage. I know a lot of other comedians have too. It is true. Women, masks make you hotter. Even though she's in a hospital gown, the picture on the right, she looks way hotter than she does in the left. Am I wrong or am I right? Anyway, right, Bobby? Uh, the picture on the left isn't the most flattering angle. Neither is being in the saying. hospital with th things in your arms. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I'm picking up what you're putting down. I think she's prettier in the right. I, I like her better when she's an invalid than I do when she's fully fed. You like your women vulnerable. I just, yes, but they're both vulnerable. A mouthful of stick is also vulnerable. And yeah, she looks like she's next to a window. Is she in a drive through Where is she in that picture? I can't tell if it's that or if that's like the reflection of a TV. Is you she know? that close to a TV? Why is her face pressed against whatever she's on? It's not a good look. It's not. And her face she doesn't it, have any boogers, though. So that's good. Well, she ate them. Probably. She's probably what made her sick. Yes. Her, war her warning to sushi lovers has since gone viral with 11.3 million views. Maybe we should have her on. You know, um, all you can eat sushi gone wrong. She captioned her snap in a video shared December 22nd. I'm a huge fan of sushi. I'd like to eat it a couple times a month if I'm lucky. Said Shapiro, adding that she had planned a trip to dine on Japanese fare with her friend. We were both looking forward to an all-you-can-eat sushi experience. Yeah, we get it. Our dinner was about two hours long because we were so stuffed we had to keep taking breaks, she said. She started off with miso soup, four gyozas, and jalapeno poppers. She then moved on to eight green dragon rolls, eight snow rolls, eight California rolls, eight wakami rolls, and a helping of edamame. That's a lot. Shapiro then revealed that what went down after her monstrous meal immediately after dinner, we were so full. We had to sit in my car for about 30 minutes for driving home. She said my stomach felt very firm for all the sushi and probably the rice that expanded in my stomach. That's what I was going to say. Probably fucking happened. She went to her partner's house to try to sleep it off that night. I went to sleep. My boyfriend. Oh, you know what? Fuck you real quick to the author again. She says boyfriend. If she says boyfriend, the author doesn't have to say partner. Don't fucking throw your own term on there because you're trying to be open to everybody. If she's not establishing that she calls it partner and she calls him boyfriend, you call him fucking boyfriend. Anyway, that night I went to sleep at my boyfriend's house and I had the worst stomach ache, but didn't think much of it since I had a huge meal. I'm not a morning. Dude, this fucking New York Post thing, he's refreshing. Fuck you. I think we're getting the idea here. She ate a lot of shit. I, I, and I woke up at 6 a.m. the next day. I knew something was wrong, she said. She asked. She added, my stomach and chest had intense pain, and it was hard to keep take deep breaths. Her boyfriend and her grandmother repeat, reportedly drove her to the hospital where she was diagnosed with acid reflux and given medication. Acid reflux? That's it? That's not why do you, you don't go to a hospital for acid. Fun. My dad used to tell us to sit in the toilet, rub our stomach and shit, and we'd feel better for everything. A broken leg, acid, whatever. You take Pepto. People experience acid reflux from stomach acid flows back up to esophagus. Okay, now they just explain acid reflux and say how many people have it. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> I'm allergic to this shitty story. Despite her trauma, she won't quit her favorite dish. I will definitely eat sushi again. All right, you know what? I'm, not, I'm done reading. Fuck this story. I thought this was going to end up being she's in a hospital. She has all those things in her arm for acid reflux. I want to say the author is the piece of shit, but I don't know. It's the lady. It's not the boyfriend. It's not the grandma. It's not the sushi place. This bitch ate 30 fucking pieces of sushi and her belly hurt a little and she made a viral fucking video because white women rule the world. Bobby, who's a piece of shit? Okay, Pat. For starters, my wife. My wife, okay? Acid reflux is a very important disease, okay? It does feel like chest pain. She thought she was having a heart attack. That's the second time she's been at the hospital so often because the first time she had a wet-ass pussy and didn't know what was going on. Okay. 
That's my Ben Shapiro. I'm proud. I know. I liked it. It wasn't great. It was. I, I knew what it was. Well, all right. You know, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. Uh, that's all I had, though. I think she's the piece of shit. It's heartburn. It's heartburn. And like, she I'd also rather die than go to the hospital and have them be like, "What did you do?" Eight thirty-four sushi rolls. And other things like they're saying is the sushi, but it was, she also ate. I get it. Okay. You're going to a $50 no, no, no. You're on the right track. Hang on. You're on the right track. Cause clearly it was the whole. Jalapeno poppers. that gave her the acid reflux, heartburn, jalapeno poppers, not yeah. fucking sushi. Every other sushi, every sushi roll she named is not known to be a super spicy sushi. No, she was throwing fucking, you know, some wasabi on the mix or a bunch of ginger and shit. Then maybe, also, maybe if you eat sushi, you should just expect to end up in the hospital. It's raw fish. Not well, I like fish. sushi, but I don't, and I eat a lot of it when I eat, but I don't eat that many at a all you can eat buffet because it's going to be shitty, not prepared well sushi. Yeah, it was 50 bucks, which by the way is expensive for a fucking all you eat buffet, usually not that much, but it's California. They better jack it up. But it's a Japanese one. But like I said, she ate. Eight green dragon rolls, which are not really known to be spicy. The, she got all like the, the minor league baseball of sushi rolls. Snow rolls, California rolls, which is the one you eat when you don't even like sushi. You know what I mean? You just get avocado, a little cream cheese, a little bullshit. And eight wakami rolls. I'm not sure what wakami rolls is. I think it's that. Wasn't that that place the Black Panther was from? And then um, yeah. miso soup. Wakami forever. Yeah. Four gyozas, which I'm not sure what that is. And uh, uh, edamame, which is dumb pee. Uh, anyone eats edamame is an asshole. They just like glutton for punishment. And a few jalapeno. It's the jalapeno virus. But like this bitch went there, spent 50 bucks, and thought, I got to get my fill because holy shit, I spent 50 bucks. Now, if she spent 50 bucks for the two of them, her and a friend, then I get it. But it was 50 a person. Yeah, you don't go to the hospital. Dishes. You keep that food. In, I wouldn't even shit. I'd be, I'm so cheap. I would not shit because I wouldn't want to get rid of the food I ate because I spent fifty dollars for all you can eat. Okay, Gabriel and Glacius, calm down. Don't do that to me. <laughs> I thought it was you did Ben Shapiro. Why couldn't I do Gabriel and Glacius? Oh, I didn't realize you were doing an impression. My bad. <laughs> oh, I was doing fluffy. I, I was a minute late. If you gave me one more minute, I was gonna go, you fat pig, you go now. You've been here four hours. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Because I already do, in my act, I already do 15 minutes of buffet jokes. I'm not going to do mine. <laughs> no, I, you're, you're not wrong. <laughs> so, but it's her, right? It's her. You can't blame, don't blame, you can't blame the buffet. The hot, I mean, here she is taking a fucking selfie in the hospital. Don't take selfies of yourself in the hospital to get fucking help. All right. Conspiracy time. All right. I feel like she was on OnlyFans and somebody paid her to eat, like make one of those stuffing videos. Oh, those well, yeah, yeah, like the belly like, videos. You can see her belly. Yeah, see the belly grow video. So she did that and then took the picture in the hospital because he was like, "Why didn't you post it?" And then she was like, "Oh, this will be a fun TikTok." Or, I see where you're going. I think is too smart. I think. She went out to eat. Her boyfriend said, hey, where are you? We were supposed to have dinner. And she's like, oh, oh, my friend made me go out. She's like, He's like, you know what? Enough. You always blow me off for shit. I'm tired of it. I'm here. Wait, I'm living with grandma for some reason. Your grandma sitting here hating my life. And you're just out gallivanting, persnickety, having a good time. And I'm tired of it. So she's like, fuck, I'm a white woman. I need to flip this so he feels bad for me. What can I do? And she says to her friend, let's go to the hospital. Because what's the? I'll take a couple selfies. I have health insurance. I don't give a fuck. I'll go there during COVID times and waste a bed so I can take a selfie. Because when you get diagnosed with acid reflux, that means nothing was fucking wrong with you. Nothing. Everyone gets acid reflux. You eat chili that's hot. You can get acid fucking reflux. If you're fat, you get acid fucking reflux. When I lost weight, I stopped having acid fucking reflux. She's thin. She just said, fuck it. I've got something wrong. She's probably so thin. She probably felt gross and threw up all the sushi and then therefore had the acid reflux, also known as bile, coming through her goddamn stomach. So I think it was a whole sympathy thing to get out of not going home and leaving the boyfriend with grandma. 
I could definitely see that 1000%. Or she uh <laughs> she was fucking Drake and cheating on her boyfriend. Oh no. And she ate the suit the semen thing? Yeah, she ate the condom trying to be hot and turn him on and Drake just let her do it cuz he's a sadistic fuck. Yeah, but you know you got to when the bitches try to eat the cum, you got to make them have the hot yum. That's the new the, fi- the hot fire I'm spitting. By the way, oh I've got a story. Oh, go ahead. But real quick, look at the picture on the right. Doesn't it? If you look for more than 10 seconds, doesn't it feel like she's literally staring a hole through you? Yeah, it definitely looks like she's trying to steal your soul. Yeah, she got it, I think. Fuck. All right. Go ahead. So this weekend was Shy West's or Chicago West's birthday. Four years old. Yes. Oh, the picture? No, this is just. So they threw. Well, have you seen party. the picture? The, the one that everyone thinks is Photoshop, or Kardashian was lying about taking her out. You could put it up. I haven't seen it now. Oh no! I, I mean, I'll, I'll look for it. Go ahead, do your thing. But basically, so they threw this big party for her and her cousin, Chloe's kid, and it was this huge bash. But they wouldn't tell Kanye where it was. Yeah. So Kanye went on Instagram and posted a video and was like, "Yo, shy, this is for you. Happy birthday." I want you to know I tried, but your mom just wouldn't tell me where the party was at. And like it went viral. And eventually Travis Scott texted Kanye the address and he got to go to the party. But who's the piece of shit? Is it the Kardashians for not inviting Kanye? Is it Kanye for going online and like putting them on blast? Or is it Travis Scott for betraying the family's trust and giving Kanye the address? Pat, we'll go to you first. Well, good. I'm happy you're going to me first. I'm the only one here. Um, it's Kanye. Um, I'm a divorced dad. I don't have that kind of relationship. It's bad. Like it's bad like that. But there, there's got to be a reason why he's not allowed to be at anything anymore. We don't really know all the shit. You know what I mean? Whatever. But you don't blast out the mother of your kids no matter what. And saying your mom won't let me do this. You're talking to a child, you're not talking to an 18 year old, you're talking to a four year old child who's not, you're talking them through Instagram and social media. That's not proper. That's not good. Dad. If you want to make sure you never see your fucking dad again or your kid again, that's how you do it. That's some red flag bullshit. Yeah, I agree, especially with the whole like, don't put the mom on blast in front of the kids because that teaches bad things. I understand there are two famous people that put the world on blast and everyone's going to go, dude, all their things are out there. But in that situation, you stop being Kanye and Kim and you start being the mom and dad to that child. I agree. The only thing I will say is Kanye said this is like the fourth or fifth thing they've done where they've then said to the press or the public that like he chose not to show up or he didn't try to be there like i guess one time he tried to go in and hang out with his kids at the house and security wouldn't let him in and then he like said something about because he thought pete davidson was there and then the family commented to the press that like you know what i mean so if it's truly this thing where they're trying to take away his kids and setting it up so that like he looks like the bad guy i could understand that i i yes I do get that too, and I've heard I've heard the Pete Davidson stuff. I actually saw a good argument back and forth between two people on Facebook that who would win in a fight with Pete Davidson and Kanye West? Where would you go in that one? One hundred percent Kanye. Possibly, I don't think either one's a fighter um, in any way. Obviously. But I'm sure Pete Davidson's kind of scrappy. But I do think that Pete Davidson would probably have so much. Being the age he is, he probably is such a fan of Kanye that he'd probably take the dive anyway. I could see that. Also, like, I don't know, man. Three kids and another dude's moving into your house. That's a lot of anger to put up with. Okay, but you're looking at it that way. Yes, the kids is the hardest part. Once again, being divorced, dad, the kids part is leaving. But when you get divorced, you don't care about the other woman anymore. Unless it was like she cheated on you, broke your heart shit. Like, it's you miss the kids. You don't miss the woman. You're kind of almost happy another guy is there, so now you get left alone. Yeah, I think when you, you want to get divorced, that's what happens. Right. He's out here talking in the press saying, like, I just want my family back. I miss our family. Like, please, Kim, come home. So I think he's still hurting. And that's why my money's on Team Yay, baby. 
But I don't think he can fight. I don't think Pete Davidson can fight. I don't know why I feel like he's going to be scrappy. Yeah, yeah, maybe. But at the same time, he's been a comedian since he was 14. Right. But I feel like his fighters, dad was a fireman. He's got to get some toughness in there, right? I'm not sure how much that influence rubbed off. I, I by the way, when I, everyone there that when I posted the picture, that was the, that one said Photoshop, but that's not the one I was looking for. I got the one I want now. Hold on, because this is supposedly really photoshopped in there. This one here is the one everyone's been talking about because they start pointing out all the things in the picture where you can tell what's going on. Um, are, you, are you there yet? No. What, did I not hit share? Of course I didn't. No, it doesn't look like it. No, I, it's, not, it's because I didn't. Hold on. I'm, it's, not my, it's my first rodeo. How about that? There we go. And uh, you should be popping in any second. And there we are. This is the Photoshop photo. Can you see it? Looks like they're at Disneyland. Okay, it does. Look at the two kids. Yeah. You can see the difference in even like the tone of the picture. Yeah, I definitely that looks Photoshop. Yeah, and it says it is Photoshop because that kid wasn't there. But oh. they did this to cause people to be upset. To say, you know, because they only did it with one kid, not the other. I forget exactly the angle of the story, but it was done to, to upset Kanye. So I'm getting that. What I'm getting at is this. Hey, you two fucks. I know you're famous and stuff, but you made kids. Grow the fuck up. And now you're making it about you, not the kids. Yeah. Because your whole life's been about you, and I get it. Don't do this to your fucking kids. Grow up. You did it. You live the life that everyone says they want. Okay, you're literally when anyone talks about any women in the world that are taking pictures of themselves or have big butts, they refer to you. You did it. You're the Mount Rushmore of butts and sluts. Okay, you're it. Kanye, you're you're a legend in your own fucking time and everyone else's time. You're one of the greatest to ever do what you do. And you're a fucking mental patient. You've both overcome everything. You've one lost a father and is in the other got a new father. That's a lady now. That's a lot of shit. And the other one went through hell and high water, is still going through that, and is a genius. But now you did it. You calm down, and you're a parent. I don't care if you're together or separate. You stop fucking around with the kids on Photoshop. Stop sharing your shit. And ladies, stop fucking Pete Davidson. He looks like worse Buscemi. What are you doing? Stop it. Stop making this man feel like he's supposed to get. His penis has been to the Mount Rushmore of pussy. That's insane. Who would be your Mount Rushmore of sluts? Of sluts? Yeah. See, I'm, I'm older, so it's not going to be anybody young and now. You know what I mean? Like, when I name them, people are going to go, they're old, but they're not. I don't look at them now. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get what you're saying. Like Betty White. <sighs> how, how, you know what, sir? I'm, I'm ending the podcast. <laughs> um, Definitely Carmen Electra is on there. Okay. Yeah, that's that's definitely fair. Avril Lavigne. Okay. I'm Always thought her attractive. I know I'm a little bit older than her, but I dated like that kind of age range. So like, it's kind of where it is. Now this third one was never one when I when I was younger and she was younger, but now that she is older, it's rare for me to like people when they're older. I don't know. There's something about her now, and it's Gwen Stefani. Nice dude. I could definitely see that. And my fourth one. I don't know what she looks like now. This one is a, when she was younger and I was younger, but always had a crush on Lark Voorhees, who was Lisa Turtle on Saved by the Bell. Nice. Dude. I don't know why. And not, not from the Saved by the Bell, her, from the Boys to Men video. Okay. When she was in that, I was like, okay. Because the other two, I know they're more known and all that, but Elizabeth Hurley, believe me, when we saw her in Showgirls, whatever, I was like, nope, not impressed. Uh, Tiffany Amber Thiessen, I was, I don't know. I mean, she's pretty, but not like, I thought you were talking about sluts. And I don't know why. I see Lisa Turtle, and I'm like, I want to fuck Lisa Turtle. <laughs> How, who are yours? You know what? We should take these kids off there while we do this. Yeah, that'd probably be a good call. <laughs> uh, Lindsay Lohan. She is right there. She, if, if I got a fifth, that's Lindsay Lohan. Yeah, she might be all four for me. And Lindsay Lohan was there for me until old Gwen Stefani became older. Gwen Stefani. She was younger. She looked. 
I, I thought she was like another Madonna gross thing, but then I don't know. Now it's just find her hot as hell. Um, kind of like your Lisa Tuttle. Mine would be uh, Christy Carlson Romano. Who? Who? Ren on Even Stevens. Oh, I know who she is. Impossible. Impossible was a big one for me. Yep. Um. Ooh, so that's two. See, because I have sisters that are that age. And I watched all those shows, so I know exactly who she is. Uh, Tara Reed. Yeah. Would be on that list. But once her tick got wacky. Then even more, because now I feel like I have a shot. Yeah, the TJ Maxx rule that it's 10% off, you can get it. And then uh, four is going to be Taylor Swift. Really? Yeah. So Central PA girl. We were talking about her this weekend, and my mom was like, I feel like she sets herself up for bad relationships. And I was like, you should probably watch what you say about Taylor. <laughs> and I was like, why? I was like, because where, where my career is going, you never know. It's going to be awkward when I bring her home. And I'm like, yeah, yeah but she's still doing well. She set yourself up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't think she's really a slut. I just like Taylor Swift. No, I think if anything, she's not. I, I don't. I think if we're going with the slut term, I don't think she's allowed to be on the list. No. So then I'll add in Megan Fox. No. Yes. I mean, I'm, it. and believe me, before getting fucked by Machine Gun Kelly, I might put her on there. But that's a whole new level of slut. The way she's acting now is like a sad mom trying for attention. Oh, yeah. I liked her when she fucked Brian Austin Green. Yeah, Jamie Lynn Spears might make take her place, to be honest with you. Nice. You know? uh, Britney. Yeah. I know but she's Jamie, a lunatic, but she's still beautiful. But at 16, Jamie got pregnant, and that really screams slut to me. Yeah. Or either one of the Simpsons. Marge, Marge or Homer? No, Nicole Brown or... OJ. No, Ashley or um, Jessica. Yeah, I could see that too. Definitely Jessica for me. Well, I Jessica is the big titted, stupid one. But I don't know. Ashley seems more fun. In seventh grade, same school with that girl who's a lesbian now. There was a kid who like was obsessed with Ashley Simpson to the point where he was like, oh my God, dude, I give up my whole life for her. And I was like, I think you're gay. Yeah, like, that's what gay men say. Second sophomore year of high school, guess what came now? Yep. Him. That's, That's like um a couple of years ago. I was watching uh I used to I watch wrestling all the time and uh Metal Pete came over. And this is before Metal Ooh, Pete yeah. came out to everybody. And uh we were watching wrestling and uh Alexa Bliss, if you know who that is um wrestler, very attractive lady, um, nice little ass. But when I watch I'm not gonna lie, when I watch wrestling, I kind of it's not sexual. I know there's hot women on it, but like I watch for the like, the athletic shit. I just don't watch it and go, she's hot. Because I'm also watching dudes wrestle. I don't, my mind doesn't go to sex. You know what I mean? I watch yeah, like your people watching football and everything else. Do you ever watch the wrestling porn? No. No. Like I know it girls, exists, but I haven't girls watched. Girls have to wrestle and they give each other points. Like if they get the girl naked and then finger her, and then at the end, the winner fucks the loser. Well, I've seen, well, I've seen that. And I've also seen the man versus woman one. You know, I don't like that. That one doesn't. No, both of them don't really do it for me because I don't like to combine my wrestling and my sex. I don't know. I just don't like it. But anyway, <clears throat> so Alexa Bliss went to the ring. She's wearing a tiny little outfit like normal. Her little nice ass is sticking out, whatever. I'm not really noticing it. But then Pete was kind of like, ah, that Alexa Bliss, huh? Mm, look at that ass. And I was just like, you could just say you're gay. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> He's like, what? And it was like, that's not the moment he told me. He kind of already hinted it, but it was just like, that was such a force, like, we're men, there's a lady. It's like, nah, you're not, I know you want to say that when Randy Orton comes out, but say it when he comes out. You know, it's like, that's fine. Yeah, whatever. I'm going to call you gay and we're going to laugh about it. Yeah. All good. You're gay and I'm going to laugh. That's how it works. And you could beat me up anytime you want to. It's fine. Yeah, exactly. All right. I think we, we did it. I think this was a, we covered it all. Mount Rushmore of sex, episode. Kanye yeah. stories cancer people little banter about comedy show we, we we ran the gamut if you will we sure did now people are gonna be upset because you're the eye candy of the show That's and they're gonna be mad sure. about this so <laughs> and depending yeah. how thursday's show goes i thought because th we had a guest originally i'm not gonna say who it is because but eventually he'll come on i was excited and he, that was definitely gonna be the uh the youtube show yeah we'll see if we can get him for thursday Okay. Solo. 
And I had someone I had someone else lined up for Thursday, and then last second they said they had to move to next week. And believe me, not a draw, just a guy I know, but he'd be fun. Nice. And I'll be home Thursday, so maybe I can even have somebody come over and we can do it in person. And then cool. you know, make it easier on them. It'll be Lots fun doing that. But coming. And I know I've been saying that the ones on the Patreon, ones, whatever, but I've been getting excited about the, so the episodes we had. As much as I wanted to keep last week's Patreon on a Patreon, Ben Ortiz kept hitting me up going, hey, man, can you share that? I want, because we're talking about it, because he wanted to know. And then he told me, Ben messaged me, I don't know if he messaged you, and he said, hey, Pat, my brother found out that I've been getting whores because I've been putting them on Facebook and everything. Well, that's, that's what happens. You put it on Facebook, Ben. He's like, and now I'm embarrassed and he's getting no mad at me for getting whores. And I told Ben, Ben, if people are going to hold you down for being who you are, maybe you don't need them in your life. Exactly. Please get him on ASAP so we can encourage him to keep getting prostitutes. By the way, this is how what she wants to be on. He hasn't had Wi-Fi in a while. And he put some money together after finding out he could be on the podcast. And then the, in three or four days, the Wi-Fi people are coming to the house. Hell yeah, dude. Setting it up. So he's going to be getting Wi-Fi and he'll be on. And he wants to talk about all of it. The, the whores. His, he, actually, right now, tonight, is like one of his first ever, after 10 years of comedy, his first ever he was booked on a show thing. That's awesome, dude. And he's nervous because he messaged me and said, my mom is coming. My friends from AA are coming. And he goes, and hot fucking chicks are going to be there. I don't know what to do. And I said, Ben, you're a fucking comedian. You don't give a fuck about those people. You tell your jokes. They don't matter. You matter. Hell yeah. And he wrote back, K. (laughs) (laughs) So hopefully it went well for Ben. I bet it did. Ben's very funny. What do you got going? Where where can people enjoy yourself there, Bobby? Uh, check out the East Side Dave show with Roy Harder every Tuesday at 730 on Compound Media. And then get out to, to Scotty's Comedy Club, January 28th and 29th. January 28th and January 29th, I will be featuring for Gino Bisconti. And I get what you're saying, Bobby. My weekends are filled. I don't want to see you on the weekends. It's there another day. Yes. Sunday, February 6th, I'll be at Broadway Comedy Club. If you have any interest in coming to that show, let me know, and I will hook you up with tickets. Thank you. Speaking of shows like that, Bobby, because I now, for the first time in a long time, I'm taking a week off vacation, it made me think about how I'm supposed to use a week of vacation. So next year, this coming year, for when my next year of week of vacation comes up, which is throughout the year, I want to do shows with you, and I want to go see all our Pennsylvania friends. Yeah, let's make it happen. Something in the summer so we have time to get it set up and I can take it off and be fine. But I want something where we can do a couple shows out there. Yeah, that'd and be do sick. like a super podcast with the fucking boy in the fridge and everybody. That would be a good one. And then maybe we could even spring it into a road trip to Richmond. Hit up Winston and his crew down there too. And if we go down to Richmond, Jake, my brother, lives in Virginia. Not too far. He can come yeah. out to some shows, hang out. We can have fun great time will be had by all i say we set that up and do it i'm on board man let's do it and if you're going to get together with your brother or with your friends you need silk city hot sauce it's the sauce that says it's the sauce that smiles back i hear that's the new saying that they've got um get on there bye i know you're like well pat now's not the season for buying shit now is the season for buying shit you give your girlfriend or boyfriend a hot sauce for valentine's day Oh, that's burning desire. That's what that is. That's love. And if you're like Drake, like we've talked about before, and your girl's trying to steal your semen, you thought he was using Frank's red hot. I bet you that semen it might have burnt, but it's still probably impregnated her. Now she's going to have a devil baby because it doesn't do the job. Silk City hot sauce. You use the ghost whisperer. Not only will it burn your mouth off and be a great flavor, it kills semen dead. That's what I hear. This year, no more pedophile jokes. It's 2022, Bobby. We've already said it. It's over. It's done. Pedophiles are done. Now we talk about the miracles that Silk City Hot Sauce can do for you. And this week's miracle is it's better than abortions. It's cheaper. It's more fun. And you can have a meal with it and kill the baby before it happens. 
Talk about an all-in-one packaging. Yep. I would choose Nightmare for that one. I would probably do Jonestown. It has a good Jonestown if you think there's going to be like, you're at an orgy. Yeah, lots at once. And not Nightmare because it's Chrissy Mayer. Nightmare because it would be a nightmare if she got pregnant. (laughs) Not Chrissy Mayer, the person you're sleeping with. Chrissy Mayer, I hope she has plentiful babies for the rest of her life, whatever the fuck you, whatever you wish on people in the 1800s. But um, follow us on all the fun things, social media, all those great things there. If you see me sharing stuff on Twitter through the POS podcast account, I have never seen it. I, I don't go on Twitter, but I attach it to my Instagram. What I'm asking all you people, the ones that watch this on either YouTube or Insta- or uh, Patreon, Share that. Follow that and share that for me because it's there. I don't know if Bobby's sharing things on Twitter. He tells me he does, but I can't see it, so I don't know. I know he's not really sharing. I know you're still here, Bobby, but you're not really sharing things on Facebook. Your job is the Twitter. So I think we need the uh, the POS army, the POS holes. I think think the army would be helpful, but I think if you check it. I can't check it. And with with your, your brother. I'm not asking him to look at anything. He said he'll look and see other people being mean to me and then he'll get mad. That's fair. I think we should call our people the POS holes. Yeah, that works. Does that work for you? I don't know. Is there anything no, else I, better? No, I like POS holes. I was trying to figure it out. Piece of shit holes. That works. Yeah, I like it. I just like S hole from the, from the line on there, but that works. No, that's perfect. Perfect. And Bobby, we'll see all of you POS holes next week. Remember. Yeah, I hope you stick it in your POS hole. What we should sell POS like uh, the cornhole thing, like the idea you and I had that time, where we take cornhole. Yeah, we put our name on. No one else had that idea. Yeah, just us. Only not us. Andy Malferina at all. No, it was just one hundred percent us. Perfect. So, Bobby, <laughs> you can't do the thing, so I'll do the thing. Perfect. All right. So you have to say to me and Pat. Oh, I thought you were going to say Bobby. <laughs> And Pat. But seriously, I sat there waiting for you to say, Bob, why would I wait for you? I'm not Bobby. <laughs> why? I mean, I wasn't making a joke there. I was really waiting for you to say Bobby, and then I'd be me. Right. And Bobby. Uh, always forget to remember. It's harder than you think. Uh, takes one to know one, whatever Bobby says. And uh, <laughs> don't be a piece of shit. <laughs>